in John chapter 15 verse 5 the secret place we talked about a message series of spending time with the Lord and developing a secret place last Sunday we talked about how a secret place is less of a place more of a mindset it's an attitude it's how you live on the inside of you living from the inside out in John chapter 15 verse 5 it says the following I am the vine you are the branches he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit for without me you can do nothing Jesus pretty much put it out there for us and says that he wants us to bear fruit and fruit is something that we cannot do without him meaning it's impossible to bear fruit without Jesus so fruit is not something that we work hard at it if all of our hard labor cannot produce fruit it, it's impossible to produce fruit fruit is something that is Christ likeness but in other words fruit is producing what's impossible it's doing something that is not possible for you to do for some of us it could be something big like honestly finishing school is impossible and that could be your fruit for some of us is to keep our tongue tame our tongue is impossible and that could be something for you for some of you to honestly nobody in your family has ever stayed married and that's honestly impossible to keep one spouse and to have kids that come from only both parents mom and dad that's impossible and for you to actually have a happy marriage is going to be that fruit so fruit is, will be different for different of us but one thing that is going to be this is that it's something you cannot do without God if you can do it without God that is great that requires your efforts but Jesus says fruit is something that you cannot do without God that is incredible you know sometimes we complain that oh people put such a heavy pressure on us people have such a high expectations at work you know my parents expect so much well take this Jesus expects you to do impossible that trumps everything that is that is a very heavy pressure to be under I want to let you know that God doesn't have low expectations of you he has expectations so high his expectations is impossible he says I want you to do impossible you can't control your anger that's what I want you to do you can you can't be punctual that's exactly what I want you to do you can't stop watching porn that's exactly what I want you to stop doing you can't quit smoking while I'm just addicted that's exactly what I want you to do. I want you to do what you cannot because you can do it without me oh but I can't get a business I can't get a job I can't finish school you don't understand I just can't Jesus says that's exactly what I expect out of you I expect impossible God expects us to do impossible Jesus gets angry at his disciples in the boat when they were worried about the storm and you were like Jesus what do you expect us to do impossible stop the storm how can we stop the storm we're not God well you've been hanging out with God and you've seen how he does things and Jesus is upset at them he says what is wrong with you why didn't you do anything about it and except you're bothering me because Jesus expects impossible there's a story in the Bible where a leper a commander comes to the prof to the king with a letter and the letter reads like this I'm a leper you need to heal me so the king being humble takes the letter rips his clothes apart and says what am I God I can't heal you and when I read that I'm like yeah I could connect with that he's not God we can't just heal people and then the prophet hears about it sends the messenger to the king and says why did you rip your clothes he said why did you do that well out of humility that I'm not God he said send that guy to me so that he will know there is a prophet in the nation I thought the king ripping his clothes is what Christians are supposed to do to tell the world we can't do anything turns out the king ripping his clothes is not what God wants us to do it's a false sense of humility God was on the side of a prophet not a king meaning God wants us to face the world and not say what we can't do but to deliver impossible now that freaks me out I'm gonna be honest with you that freaks me out because I'm like I can't heal but why did Jesus tell me to heal the sick Jesus didn't say to pray for the sick he says heal the sick he expects me to produce what's impossible that's why the secret place is so important because a secret place makes impossible possible secret place makes supernatural natural 
a secret place abiding in Jesus that's what Jesus says abide in me not so that you can do better not so you can feel better not only so that well I could just you know be a little bit happier most of us can be a little bit happier with just five dollar raise that's not what the Lord is asking us just to be a little bit improved in our life he says abide in me let me abide in you meaning dwell in my secret place so you can produce fruit you can produce what's impossible that your life will carry a fruit a fingerprint of God things that are not possible the world is expecting that out of us the world is not expecting us to be perfect Christ is not expecting us to be perfect he expects us to produce fruit now let me just remove the pressure the pressure is not on us my friends the pressure is on Jesus in the Old Testament see this whole vine vine and branches story uh, for most of us that doesn't unless you live somewhere in Prosser or Sunnyside and you have a vineyard like for most of us this is not a story like yeah great we don't have those things planted in our backyard so my dad does but we don't for Israel the story of the vineyard was very similar to them because God many times compared Israel to a vineyard and he would punish Israel for them not producing the fruit Israel was the vine and Abraham was the root system the Abrahamic covenant was the root system Jesus comes and he says I am the vine the pressure now the father has is on me to produce you guys are just an extension of me I want to let you know the pressure is not on you the pressure is on Jesus and you're the extension of Jesus yes you are weak Jesus is strong but the same thing that Jesus had you have branches even look similar to the vine they're just weaker feeble and they're not the source but the pressure is on Jesus to produce I'm just the extension of doing impossible when our church started when this building was bought many years ago and I remember being a little teenager in in the council of the holy men of God I was ears, eavesdropping on what they were talking about and the pastor my father and a few others were sitting and the pastor presented this idea that you know we need to buy a building and this was about 18 or something years ago and I heard the panic I heard the the worry I heard the but is this the right move we don't have the money to put it in perspective church had no money but that wasn't the problem church had no papers so we actually didn't exist in the eyes of the law we were I don't think we even had a bank account because you can't open a bank account if you don't have the papers so and we didn't speak the language we didn't understand the culture and this church did not have a future from the human standpoint of view and my pastor says that we need to get a building so usually people get people first and then they get the building so people can help to pay for it my pastor did it the opposite this was impossible to get a building without money but what was impossible with some time became a step of faith it was risky when we moved into this facility and we were gathering the finances there was another person who was trying to acquire this facility for book publishing and for print publishing company in fact he was Christian and I was told that there were times that our pastor would come to pray here and he would pray here as well to him for him to have a building and for our pastor to have a building the only thing that he did not do that I think our pastor beat him to is fasting as our pastor added fasting he overpowered him and we got the building I'm just kidding I'm not sure if that's how it worked <laughs> but I want you to see that we didn't get the miracle of this facility because we were smarter richer and wealthier is that when you abide you're expected to produce supernatural you're expected to do what's impossible what's not possible you're expected to step out and to do what honestly is out of out of your comfort out of your resources and your possibilities and that's exactly what happened when we got the building it was the greatest miracle for us it was impossible and it became possible and the crazy part is we were not paying for it because around the same time that we started to pay for the building the school government school lost their facility they needed a facility to rent they rented half of our facility and they paid twice as much as a monthly mortgage impossible became possible then then there was a part of then there was the part of filling this building that was that was also impossible where for years 
we've done everything we could so that we could see people come to know Jesus and come and see people come and sit on our biggest conferences we wouldn't pack what we see today on our normal Sunday morning it was difficult it was impossible put it in perspective we've done everything we could from standing with the signs praise God that some of you guys did not come here 10 years ago you'll be embarrassed to be part of hungry gen <laughs> fasting was least of our problems <laughs> fasting we did it like joy brother Larry knows I saw him waving he made it <laughs> you made it about brother Larry yeah through all of that I mean I'm talking about standing with signs on the highway long signs many signs like life like threatening signs like there's not like God loves you signs but like signs like it wasn't raining when Noah was building the ark like these kind of signs I'm talking about going to the park with guitar and accordion and and playing Russian songs hoping that God will translate them for the English speaking community that they will get the message that we're trying to save them and they thought we were mariachi band and were trying to give us some money I'm talking about the disco and dancing was very popular and I remember we, we decided to do a retro meets disco or disco meets retro something foolish like that none of us knew neither what those things meant because we grew up in the Pentecostal house dancing was demonic and so we didn't do any dancing and so we brought a disco ball in the gym and none of us knew what to do with that ball and of course nobody showed up to our disco meets retro and so we pretty much turned on uh, Michael W. Smith I think and prayed together and that's about it. Took the disco ball down and realized that didn't work. And so I'm letting you know it was really impossible. All of our efforts were, were kind of futile from bringing the pig to the sheep to driving a motorcycle, the car getting stuck in the lobby to a lot of things that were done, spreading flyers, so many flyers that I almost got expelled from second largest high school in the state of Washington Pasco High because I didn't know you have to ask for permission and I put a thousand flyers on the walls of Pasco High and pretty much put staplers everywhere and so a lot of things were done that were it seemed like it was impossible today we're looking at Sunday morning service and we have 30 something people that are coming from all around of United States that that was the size of our youth group and today that's the size of our just one school we have two of them today both of the services are filled to the capacity today there's no service where somebody doesn't give their life to Jesus what was impossible today is possible we are facing another impossible right now we want new building there's a there's a land that's for sale on road 100. It's only one million five hundred thousand dollars. It's as big as was the size of when we bought this building was three hundred thousand dollars. So the land is what four or five times more. It's only 17 acres but this one is about three something acres and and we are praying to buy the land. We're believing that God wants us not only to do this here but God wants us to have a facility maybe something that will in the beginning will be like smaller facility 600 500 seats and then it will be um, you know two three thousand seats auditorium that will be attached to it that we will have a dormitory there for our entrance and our schools that will come in and it will be for generations to come but a million and a half is not is not what this building is worth or you know how much we paid off and so I want to let you know today that God expects impossible God expects us to aim for impossible God expects us to dream of impossible he that's actually his standard expectation of a branch you have to understand I with all of my education all of my wisdom if my life would depend on me I can't produce a grape I can't produce an apple I just can't you can beat me you can cut me to pieces but I just cannot produce an apple I cannot produce them but for a branch that is connected to the vine it comes natural you must understand when you're connected to God you must understand when you have a secret place you can dream of impossible you can dream of overcoming limitation you can dream of seeing your sickness being healed you can dream of seeing your addiction being broken you can dream of seeing your back record your bad record to be cleansed you can dream 
of starting a business. You can dream of seeing your children come back home. You can dream of the impossible because that is what God expects of those who dwell in the secret place to live in the impossible. Somebody give God some praise right now. If you believe for the impossible with us, give God some praise right now. If you believe impossible is simply impossible, give God some praise right now. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you God. We thank you God. That's why we believe the sick will be healed. That's why we believe the captives will be delivered. That's why we believe that backsliding children will come home. That's why we believe that divorce is not the solution. God has a solution. It might be impossible. It might be impossible. But God says, you know what impossible is? It's just two words. I'm possible. God says, I am possible. God says, I can do it. I can help you. Some of you sitting here, I'm looking at your faces and I'm remembering the stories of how your situation was impossible. I'm remembering Brian, you know, where he overdosed four times and that was impossible and he's a few months away to finish his bachelor's today because the impossible becomes possible. I remember other couples other couples who lived in fornication, who lived not being together but one person got saved, the other person got saved and today not only they're a wonderful example to their family but they're leading different teams at church because impossible becomes normal. My friend, you may say well Matt, this is all great you know, feels like you know Tony Robbins is encouraging. I'm not, I'm not preaching positive Christianity. This is not about hype. This is about faith. This is not about positive thinking. This is about cooperation with the Holy Spirit. We're not preaching positive thinking. We are preaching faith. You may say what is the difference? Goliath had positive thinking. He was very positive. Very positive. There was not one negative thought in him and well he had no reason for to be negative. He was very tall and he was very strong and he had a very good record. But all of that positivity did not have power against the forces of darkness. David was also positive but David was in partnership with Holy Spirit. We are abiding in Jesus. We have a secret place and that secret place is not only so that we can feel better so we can become pious or religious. It's a secret place so that we can attempt to do the impossible. I believe God is expecting the church to make the same statement Jesus made. If I don't do the works, don't believe me. Imagine what would happen if we would say that. If nothing happens here that cannot be explained, don't trust Jesus. That's what Jesus said. We're His extension. I believe God wants us to believe for impossible. That's why we believe for the sick to be healed. That's why we pray for the captives to be delivered. That's why we stand and we believe for those things that are impossible for them to, to find a solution. Jesus says, every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit in verse 2 of chapter 15 he says my father he lifts up I used to be intimidated by this verse because in the way I grew up this was presented like this that if you are in Jesus and you don't bear fruit God cuts you off and I was like oh that sucks you know I mean like if I don't produce Christ likeness God comes in and so you're like man and so you were always you always had this pressure like oh my god I really want to perform why I don't want to burn in hell but in here that's not what this means. The word lifts up in, in, or takes up in the original language means to elevate, to lift up. And most of your Bibles it will use the word beside it, lift up. It, it, what happens like this is sometimes a branch on the vine is actually connected to the vine. It has all the sap flowing into it but somehow it finds its way to the ground. And the owner doesn't come and cut it. The owner comes and lifts it and ties it to something higher. I believe if you are here today, you are in Christ and you have a secret place but you're under the ground of impossible situations. You realize you're not producing impossible. You're in the dust. You're not producing anything. You're overwhelmed by the problems of life. I want to tell you Jesus is not here to cut you. He's here to lift you up. He's here to encourage you. The only people He cuts away is those who don't want to abide in Him because they themselves cut themselves out. Jesus doesn't condemn, He motivates, He encourages, He inspires. He says, listen, I got you. I know you can't control your anger but let me do it with you. I know you can't change your attitude but let me do it with you. I know you cannot change your kids but let's do it together. Abide in me. Let's, let's get you off the ground. Let's get you off of the guilt. Let's get you off of 
depression. Let's get you off of condemnation. Let's get you off of all the things that you've been biting the dust. Let's lift you up to my word. Let's lift you up to my promise. Let's lift you up to what you can do through me because I live inside of you. Don't be on the ground. I want you to be on the post. I want you to be on my word. I want you to be on my truth. If you're recognizing that you're surrounded with impossible but you're not conquering impossible, Jesus wants to lift you up right now. He wants to lift your situation. He wants to lift your spirit. He wants to give you a new attitude. My friend, it's a choice. A lion is not a king of jungle because a lion is the biggest. Elephants are bigger than a lion yet a lion is the king of jungle. A lion is not the king of jungle because the lion is the smartest. Half of other animals are smarter than lion. A lion is not the king of jungle because the lion is the fastest. Cheetahs are faster than lion. A lion is not the king of the jungle because lion is biggest better or or faster or smarter the only reason why lion is the king of jungle is because the view lion has of himself when lion walks into a jungle he sees everything as food when other animals look at lion they see him as an eater let me ask you a question it's not about your education right now. It's not about your connection. It's not about your appearance. And it's not about what you've been, what you've done and who you've done it with. The question is this, what is your view of you? It's not how the society views you. It's not how your husband views you. It's not what your wife called you. It's not what your parents labeled you. It's not what people said you are. What does you say about you? And see some of us, the view we have of ourselves is we are on the dirt. We are on the ground. And that's why it limits the secret place is not able to produce the impossible out of us because it's limited by the mindset we have of ourselves and God wants to take the lid off and says don't view you through you view you through me view you through the cross view you through my promise view you through the Calvary make impossible and impossible will become possible my friends if you stop viewing you through you but through his cross and through his promise what the secret place does for me is that is it takes the lid off of me and it lets me expect impossible even when that impossible is just not possible for me to write a book and the second book is coming out in about a few weeks um, I have high school diploma okay I don't have college degree um, but I have people who have college degrees <laughs> I can write it they can edit it <laughs> and proofread it <laughs> and uh and we have people that are very educated that work on our on, on our staff and i'm very very honored i'm way better uh, than them and you know for somebody like me to to do to do what i do is impossible some of the people that knew me 18 years ago they said that's that's not you see that's exactly what god expects out of you and me it doesn't mean that you have to be an author it doesn't mean you have to be a businessman it doesn't mean but but something you have to do that is not you because the Holy Spirit doesn't make me better than you. He makes me better than me. He changes me. He makes me do what's not possible. Because through Him, His grace flowing, His sap flowing. You're not called to live a busy life. You are called to live a fruitful life. See, without the Holy Spirit, you will be busy. But with the Holy Spirit, you'll be fruitful. God doesn't want us to just be busy. God wants us to be fruitful, meaning produce what's not possible by human strength, by, by His grace. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Well, that was my point one. I think that's good for today. Every impossible situation has to bow their knee to Jesus Christ. This has to be our hunger and our appetite. We don't bow to the impossible situations. Impossible situations bow to Jesus. Smith Wigglesworth was sitting in one house and, and, the, and one guy had two legs amputated. And it wasn't like we have um, artificial legs today where they're, you know, they actually look you know, somewhat decent. You won't be able to, to see the difference. It they, they, they was very obvious that the guy had no legs and it wasn't all pretty. And Smith looks at him and he says, I want you to go tomorrow and buy yourself a new pair of shoes. The guy looked at him and said, are you insulting me? You know, he didn't say anything back because it was Smith. He went to sleep and he was just went to sleep offended. He says, Lord, how dare he tells me to buy a new pair of shoes. I have amputated legs. I don't need shoes, number one. And number two is that I, I have sh already 
these little artificial things and he hears the Holy Spirit in his sleep to, or in his before he goes to sleep says he told you just do it next morning he goes to the store and he, he says I want to buy a new pair of shoes they ask him what the size is he gives him the size that he wants and the guy looked at his artificial legs and he said is this for your friends or um, he says it's for me he takes the he takes the shoes and that's according to the eyewitness testimonies that I've read the moment he takes the shoe his artificial legs he takes the shoe and as he puts on his artificial leg the artificial leg turns into skin muscles blood and bones becomes real leg he takes it on the second one it becomes real leg you may say but that's impossible so is walking on water you may say but that's impossible so is cleansing 10 lepers that's impossible so is being born blind by Timaeus and then your eyes open you may say but that's impossible so is the dead Lazarus who died is impossible I want to tell you something Jesus says and the works that you that I do you will do even greater I want us to have an appetite for supernatural an appetite for impossible why because with God nothing is impossible today is the day where God wants us to hunger for the impossible situations to bow their knee to Jesus for us to see thousands locally and millions globally for us to see people from all four corners of the earth not only to come to hungry gen and be equipped watch and be blessed but to receive Jesus to find healing and to find deliverance impossible to bow their knee to Jesus hallelujah we are in this room today what I want us to pray for today is I want us to pray for our next step which is difficult but not impossible without God is I want us to believe that as one day it was not possible for us to have this building as one day for many years of attempts it was not possible to fill it to believe that God will give us a really beautiful land that it will be paid for that we will have the favor with the city and the permits and that one day we will step into a new phase where it will be a beautiful facility where there will be a school where people will be able to come and live there and then there will be a bigger facility that will build there for the glory of God it's not just for us my friends we can stay here just fine but it's for our children it's for our grandchildren it's for thousands others who are still don't even know they're lost like some of us in here today you didn't even know that there is hungry generation you didn't even know anything about God but somebody was dreaming somebody was aiming for the impossible they made room and today you and I are here and we're going to do exactly the same thing for the next generation. We're going to do exactly the same thing for so many others that are yet to come, that are yet to receive Jesus. I want you to rise to your feet.